So with that, I am very excited to introduce Irfana Jethi Narani, the Deputy Director of the 11th Street Bridge Park, the first project of its kind here in DC. I'll let her talk more about um, the important community work that she's been working on right now with Bridge Park. We're really excited that she'll be here with us today in conversation with DC artist John Johnson and gospel performances Tashi Gore about documenting the stories of everyday people. So are you guys all with us here? Yes, we're here. Hi, everyone. Take it away. Thanks Thank for being here. You. Thank you guys so much for hosting us. Um, that was an awesome conversation. Thank you, Philippa. Um, uh, art as a tool for empathy and understanding is certainly something that is woven through a lot of the work that we do at the 11th Street Bridge Park. So I'm so happy to bring, bring us home today um, with a project that we've been working on in Southeast Washington, DC. So just quickly to introduce myself, my name is Irfana Jachinarani. I'm the Deputy Director of the 11th Street Bridge Park. Um, and the Bridge Park is a public-private partnership between the Ward 8 nonprofit Building Bridges Across the River and the District of Columbia to build a new civic space in Southeast Washington, DC. And you can learn more about the project at bridgepark.org. And next Wednesday, we'll actually be hosting a project update meeting at 4 p.m. on Wednesday on Facebook Live, so you can learn more about the design of the project there. But today, I'm really excited to be here um, to share more about an international collaboration that we've been supporting between um, local DC artist John Johnson and Scotland's Glass Performance. And I'm joined by John and Tashi Gore, who've been working together for almost a year on a new devised theater piece um, that's called Conversations with Grandpa. Um, and we'll post links to the artist's websites in the chat so you can learn more about their work there. Um, but I'd like to start actually sharing around two minutes, two and a half minutes of a video we shot last summer, um, which was the start of the project and wanted to give everyone a little introduction to the project with this video. So I'm going to share my screen and play. Give me a second, it's giving me issues. Okay, I don't think it's gonna work. Um, oh, here we go. Can you hear it? When we started this work around creating our equitable development plan, it was really important to us to look at economic gentrification and how that affects the community, but also really talk to the community about cultural gentrification and that sense of belonging and feeling like you're part of your neighborhood. And so this work, collaboration between John Johnson and and Glass without having residents be at the center of sharing their narratives with the community and with the city. I am a native Washingtonian, a poet, playwright, director, just creative person. We're in a fellowship with Tashi and Jess who are from Scotland. And we're working on a piece that shows affection between grandfathers and grandsons. For this particular piece that we're working on, just to hear the, the stories and the colors and the depth of people's lives, it's just intriguing. He was very ill by the time I knew him, 
before he died of old age. There are a lot of things I never got to know about you. I don't know if you played any sports or what your favorite sport was to play when you watch. In a very dominated society that exists amongst men, and um, sometimes men can be villains, to show this affection amongst men and a granddad and grandson is very wonderful, as well as the generational kind of differences between someone who's like in their 70s, you know, and someone who is of uh, um, a, a, a youthful age. I, I like the dance, the dance uh, routine also. What is it called again? It's called the La. Floss, floss, flossing your teeth. So I'll just pause it there um, and invite you guys um, certainly to um, view the rest of the video and we'll share the link um, in the chat section. Um, but I'd love to. to um, open out to just the creative process with the artist, um, joined by Tashi from Glass Performance. They're based in Scotland. And John Johnson, who's a local DC artist um, based in uh, Southeast DC. Um, and I want to uh, just start off with Tashi. Um, and Tashi, I would love for you to talk a little bit about Glass's practices and methodologies for collecting stories and the framework that you developed for conversations with Grandpa. Hi everyone, it's good to it's good to see everyone and I, I feel really sad that I couldn't join the meeting earlier. It sounds like you're having an amazing conversation. Um, um, I, I feel like I've got loads to respond to, just like the, the snippet of the conversation that I heard earlier, but I'm just going to try and hold on to that. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about our organisation. So we're based in Scotland. Um, we've been running for about 15 years in Scotland. And um, what Glass Performance does is that we work with people um, to tell their own stories. And we tell the everyday stories of people who would not otherwise have that opportunity to share those stories. Um, we work for, we always work from a question that I work with a, another woman who's called Jess. And we always work from a question that we have about the world that we're living in at the moment. So I thought the easiest way to like demonstrate that is actually just to tell you about a few of the past projects that we've done over the last 15 years. So when Jeff and I were a bit younger, we were really obsessed with um, the idea of like whether you could be in love with someone for a whole lifetime. Like we've both been in quite a few failed relationships. <laughs> and um, so the question that we had was, you know, um, can love last forever and so we put an advert in the paper saying have you been married for a lifetime and would you like to make a show with us about that and this was like the first um show that we made together and we had um lots of co couples who responded to us and we met them all and there was one couple that we actually fell in love with and um we made a show with them that was called lifelong which was about their relationship together and through making that, I suppose, as artists, we understood more about relationships and, and um, we hoped that through presenting their stories that the, that the audience also understood more about that. Um, we made a, we were, we were really interested at one point in female relationships and what is handed down through generations of women. I come from, my mum's family is a really, really big family of women and, um, so we similarly put an advert in the paper for women for to make a show with women from the same family. We thought we might get, you know, maybe four women from the same family, but we got this amazing email back from a woman who said that she had 15 of her family members who were interested in participating and making a show with us. So we made a piece called Hand Me Down and it ended up with 11 women from the same family. They were all, the youngest was eight and the oldest was 73. Um, and then, so more recently, we've become really interested in masculinity and the way that men are portrayed um, in, uh, in the arts and 
in the media and the, and the stories that men are encouraged to tell. And so we've made a piece called Motion in, um, with a group that we run in the Young Offenders Institute, which is all about what it's like to be a young man in Scotland today and their experiences and their stories of, um, of the world as it is at the moment. Um, and so really alongside that, we also developed um, conversations with, gran with grandpa um, and this we first made in Glasgow and this we made because we were interested in the, this idea of what are the stories that what are the stories that we hear about men and what are the stories that men share with each other um, and what is the what is the legacy that is passed down and so we made this in I think first in 2015 in Glasgow and the way that this piece works is that it's three duets and the first duet is a one-year-old or two-year-old and his grandfather the second duet is an eight to twelve year old and his grandfather and then the third duet is a young man so anyone that's over the age of 18 and under the age of 26 and his grandfather or we have the absence of his grandfather if that if the young man who comes forward to participate um has lost his grandfather but has a, would like to make the piece in tribute to, to them um and the way that we've kind of um constructed the process for this particular show um is that it it that we we, we make it in small parts so that it the concept can travel so we, we developed it in Glasgow but we've now made four different versions of it in different communities across the UK and now we're working with John to make one in DC and it's really important to us that we always work with a local artist and that they really become the leader artist on the project but they take um, the struggle so every time we re-perform the show we're engaging with a different community we're telling the stories of a different community and we're finding the right way to tell those stories and that's why it's so important to work with an, a local artist on it because in each community there is a different right way of telling those stories and we don't want to even though we take our structure um the and, and some of the conventions within that structure some of the ways of of telling the stories have to be different if that makes sense <laughs> john maybe starting um, with you just like how you guys um, took that framework that Tashi and Jess created in Scotland and like how has it been like to adopt it to an American framework? Cool. First of all, I'm excited. I took a shower for this. I didn't know I was going to bump into 53 people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put a little bit of truly on so hopefully you can smell, you know, <laughs> smell me so that I'm fresh. But okay. Um, so yes, yes. Um, Tashi and Jess, they, they, um, they came in with their framework and, um, you know, we live in a predominantly African-American community. This piece speaks to um, these, these granddads who are predominantly African-American. And before, before I have to do this, because my kids allowed me on the Zoom call, they want me to show you what we've been doing with toilet paper rolls. So <laughs> these, are, these are important, you know what I mean? And, 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 and it speaks to the culture, like, you know, in America, toilet paper is like important. I don't know if it's important everywhere else. You know, I know in France they have bidets, so maybe, you know, toilet paper is not that important, but it's very important right now and you can create art out of everything. So that's just one point. And, and so the transition and to answer your question, Irfana, um, the African-American story is important. You know what I mean? A lot of, um, a lot of black males are considered these like super masculine beings, you know, that are made for football and bumping into one another. And we produced this piece during the Me Too movement, you know what I mean, where there was a lot of, um, a lot of uh, attention put on like the equality amongst the genders. 
Um, but it was also important to show that males have this affectionate aspect that often isn't celebrated in many ways. You know what I mean? Um, we can, you know, all of the police brutality has people geared up that these males are very aggressive. So um, it was wonderful to kind of tease out the gentleness that exists. But, and just let me give you a, an example of what I mean that, that actually came from this piece right before the pandemic, um, the pandemic, there was, a, um, we, we met with some of the um, performers and tried to kind of update the piece, you know, because much has happened since we put on a, what we call a scratch show. And um, there's, there's, a, there's a granddad who had his only son who finally, who has three kids now. So he was like super excited to have grandkids. He's like, my only son had grandkids, but he married a woman who was a, a womanist or a feminist and his grandkids took on the last name of, of his wife. So he was like excited to have like, you know, his legacy live on, but then was like, but they won't have my last name, you know, like, so to reconcile that, to have a discussion, a, a, a very um, authentic discussion of the, the anger, the angst, the understanding of how the world evolves very much like we are now, because we're all on a Zoom conference, 50, three people on a Zoom conference together. We're trying to figure out, like, you can't smell my patchouli right now. But I had to explain it to you, you know? So, you know, so these, these pieces really give, like, very authentic understandings of the way people grapple with the changes, and especially gender roles, you know what I mean? Because that's something that still seems hardwired in our society that has caused some issues, and, and as well as maybe it has some benefits too, but we get to explore those things and get to highlight the sensitivity that exists in the black community amongst the male population. Thanks, John, for that. And just thinking about sort of how this project is moving into the current day, you know, the three of us had a really great conversation last week about the urgency of this work and how this piece resonates so much more and in an entirely different way because we're capturing the stories of our elders. Um, and so I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about, you know, how you're reflecting on this work now that we're in this sort of urgent situation of need, wanting to capture these stories um, and how will it sort of impact the way that you develop the piece over the next year for either one of you. I'll chime in real quick. I mean, you see all of the, the videos of folks standing outside their window because they can't go into these homes and meet, to see their grandparents or the caregivers of elders. And you realize that other than Wikipedia, like the elders actually have stories. They've seen a lot. Like now we will. We'll be like, oh, there was, what, September 11th and there was the COVID epi you know, epi epidemic that, that took us, you know, that, that changed our worlds. And, you know, so folks to talk about like, oh, there used to be a telephone plugged into the wall where we couldn't text and, and, and see videos, like all of those stories that come out of these elders, you know, they, they were our, li they are our libraries of, of how we move forward and information of, of the way the world has changed. And so it's just important to capture those stories. And I'm saying this piece really dug into that aspect of the way the world was and how it's evolved. And, um, and it's just important to do now because we're losing those people now. Like those people are the most vulnerable folks in our society now. And um, so, I mean, and it's not just granddads, it's grandmothers too, but I'm saying it's just important that we, we, we give space for those stories to be told. Tashi, any thoughts yeah. about how this is sort of affecting your Yeah, project? I mean, I think for me, what, um, is my, can you hear me okay? Um, I think for me, what's we always so interesting about doing this project is that when we start asking the older gentlemen in in um the piece when we start asking them questions and they start telling us the stories they say quite often that they've never told anyone the stories that they tell us because no one's ever asked them and i think that that really often gets me thinking about you know who who is it that we ask us who is it that we ask questions to and who gets to who gets to speak and especially i think for older men i don't think that that they that they emote very often. I don't think that they 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 tell us the like the stories that the, their experience of the world. They only tell us a very small part of their experience of the world. And for me, I think I just really realised that there's a whole generation of people who are particularly vulnerable at the moment to the, the to this pandemic. And 
and I just keep thinking about all the stories that we could possibly lose because of the situation that we're in right now. And so I think that I just want this to keep keep saying to everyone go and have a conversation with your parents and your grandparents like find out find out their stories um so yeah i think for me it's really important that this piece captures the experience of a generate of a generation thanks guys i just want to encourage you if you have any questions for the artists to just put them into the chat um and we ha we have about five minutes left so we will definitely um get to them um, while we're waiting for some questions, just, you know, wanted to talk about your collaboration a little bit and um, I have a question for both of you. Um, can you share one thing that you've learned from the other over the course of your um, collaboration? Um, I think for me, it's definitely been that um, John has like a really amazing ability to, um, to, 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 so, so, so tease out stories from people that are really hard like to have conversations with people that are really difficult conversations but to stay really level-headed and joyful and truthful um within within that conversation because i don't know as an artist sometimes i find like those conversations i can get really intense or really um uh but 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 yeah but i suppose but what i feel like when i'm with john is that it it that he remains that, that there always remains a sense of like bringing it back to a sense of reality a sense of humor um and a sense of lightness that actually you really do need to counterbalance the really difficult stories um and i love that about working with john oh thank you tashi I wish I could a digital hug for you. Um, and, 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 and working with, with Tashi and Jess, I think um, what, what, particularly Tashi, since she's on here, like the movement that exists in the piece is oftentimes when you interview someone and it's, it's very talkative, um, I think the ability to actually make it a theater piece and, and have the, the, the grandsons and grandfathers dance and, and to make it visually stimulating, so that you can get through the narrative. I think they do that seamlessly, you know, and their format is easily transferable in all cultures. You know, they've done this all around the world. So I, I really enjoy kind of learning their process and, and seeing how her background in dance translates to the stage. I have a, qu a question from um, our audience. Um, is in our current global situation, how do you envision the work evolving within the virtual space? Say that, say that one more time, please. Um, in our current global situation, how do you envision the work evolving within the virtual space? Um, I mean, we've, had, we've had a few conversations about this, haven't we? Yeah, we, we have. I mean, like, like we're, we're still at the beginning of this. Like, we're going to lose a lot of, a lot of those, those libraries. You know, and, 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 and we're going we're gonna to love to hug our, our, our grandparents and smell Bengay or whatever, eucalyptus, whatever they use. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna mean, we're gonna, we're gonna really mean it when we, when we connect with people again. And um, we're gonna listen way more intently to these stories. Um, and so I, I just wanna celebrate, not just the grandfathers, but the grandmothers too. So to answer the question of how it evolved, I mean, I think that there's space to get both sides because they're both, they're, they're both equally important. Tati, did you have anything to add? I mean, I think for for us, we, we we've talked a lot about you know what what what, uh, what an, an online version of this might look like, and I think for us, we sort of landed in um, a place where that we that it was a live experience, but that there that there might be spare grandparents that we could capture in a, in a digital format to then be able to share. So what are the kind of key questions that we have within this piece? And what are some key conventions or prompts that we could use to, um, to, to capture some of 
some of those relationships and some of those stories. So I suppose this is kind of an ongoing conversation that we're having. Thanks guys. There's um, another question around like, how does this project see supporting equity in this part of our city? Um, and I'll ask my colleague, um, Destiny, who's helping me with the chat today to post our equitable development plan. Um, so as part of um, the Bridge Park's efforts, we've been working with our residents to really define how the Bridge Park can become a platform for sharing the histories, narratives, and stories of Black residents in our city. Um, and that's, a, um, that's something that sort of came directly from our residents as, as one of our, our efforts um, for creating this project. And so you can sort of read more about um, what those artists and cultural leaders who are part of our planning process um, put um, into our equitable development plan for us. And this project is sort of a direct response in capturing the stories and letting our community tell their stories on stage. Um, and just wanted to, as we're sort of wrapping up um, at our time here, um, you can see this show um, hopefully in person, knock on wood, um, June 17th through the 20th, 2021 um, at the ARC Black Box Theater. Um, you can visit bridgepark.org to learn more about our work. And I want to thank Halcyon for inviting us and Destiny Johnson, who's our program associate, who's been helping uh, to work on this project and has been helping me um, keep track of the chats today. So thank you, Destiny. And thank you, Halcyon. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Arfana. It was really, really wonderful to see you. And I love your Zoom background. I think it gives us all, you know, this sort of hope for the future and this optimism that we definitely need to um, tap into right about now. And, and thank you for bringing John and Tashi into this conversation. I really can't wait to see how this work evolves. And I've been really excited about this project since it first started out. So yes, knock on wood, pray to whatever whatever gods we need to for for 2021 um and thank you and the team at building bridges across the river for continuing to really advocate for it, this space and this community so that really wraps it up i would say that we ended on such a high note i'm gonna call my grandparents and my parents right after this <laughs> um, because it really you know it brings us all together in terms of thinking about closeness and togetherness and and just you know how we're dealing with isolation right now so wow i i really i don't even think i have the words to express how amazing this day has been um and i feel like i've said amazing at least 50 times today so thank you so so much to all the artists and organizations who have joined me here today um thank you to team halcyon for all of your work behind the scenes and managing the chat and and getting all the technical things sorted um and thank you to you the audience for tuning in um for showing your support and for engaging with us across this really crazy technological divide. Um, I've been so inspired by everything I've seen and heard today. And I hope that many of these conversations can continue in meaningful ways. And like Philippa and Elif mentioned a little bit earlier, create some meaningful relationships, even while we're so far and isolated away from one another. Um, if you missed any of today's presentations, we have been recording the entire day here on Zoom. So after the many hours, maybe days, it takes to download this video, we're going to find the best way to get it out there and share it with all of you. Um, all of our presenters have a really great schedule of online programs available through their websites and individual social media platforms. For Halcyon, we'll be continuing our Wednesday breakfast series with social entrepreneurs, tackling very pressing issues of our times. That happens every Wednesday at 8.15. Um, and on Fridays, we're continuing to hold virtual studio visits with Halcyon artists. So stay tuned for all of that happening in, in the next month and launching next week. Um, whew, so we're going to leave this Zoom chat open for a few more minutes so people can have a chance to connect on the chat and log out on your own. But I am sending you all so much love um, and sending healthy and empathetic vibes. I really feel so much more connected to everyone after today because, you know, really we're all in this together. And I hope to see everyone again here online or IRL very, very soon. Mwah.